We're in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress 2019. We're here in front of the Red Hat stand and I'm here with Stephanie Chiras from Red Hat. Stephanie, great to see you. Great to see you too. It's good to be here. So can you give us uh, like an overview, the picture of how Red Hat fits into the telecom industry and how you're working with the global telco community to, to help them with their strategies and their transitions? Yeah, absolutely. So. I think what's great about the telco industry, as you can see here at MWC 19, is it's incredibly diverse ecosystem, right? Incredible ecosystem in telecom. And so what we have done is, and what, right, really why Red Hat is so critical and why we've been playing in this space for now over six years, is really to make sure that Linux as an operating system is a strategic choice. Okay. We're now a portfolio company at Red Hat. We clearly started out with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, delivering you know, security, stability, resiliency within an open source development model in order to bring that Linux capability as a platform. As we've evolved now, we've used that same technology and the ecosystem that we have with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it now underpins OpenStack. And, okay. and by bringing that in, it has really allowed to feed the telecom industry in order to deliver stability, resiliency, things like SE Linux, which we have, which is true security in the operating system. And that comes up and feeds into that OpenStack realm. And now the third platform we have is OpenShift. So as the world moves to containerization from the virtualization of OpenStack into containerization, which we all know is part of the excitement around NFV world today. Absolutely. You know, Cloud we, native is one absolutely. of the big terms. Yeah. And so that same ecosystem, that stability, security, all transfers over into that containerization world. So I think as we come in with our three platforms, all with an ecosystem that translates and the focus on security and stability and resiliency, right? That's what allows customers to take that journey, right? From when they run VMs, when they run that level of virtualization as they move to containers, right? With that level of comfort. It's really having continuity across the entire virtualization space that allows real confidence in when you deploy. Okay, so for a lot of companies still, this kind of transition is quite early stages, but there are also examples of network operators who have taken quite a dramatic leap and are leading the way. And you're working with one of those companies in Japan, is that yeah, right? Yeah, certainly. So we work very closely with Rakuten. Okay. And they have done an amazing job of showing the innovation that can happen in this space. Um, so we partnered with them. They really have taken on a greenfield approach, right, which is beautiful way to bring innovation in. And, you know, as we look at Linux, I think one of the things that's critical about Linux and the open source development model we have and all our work with upstream communities is being able to have that rapid access to innovation. Then you pull that into a company like Rakuten and, you know, they have, they have laid out their virtualization on Red Hat. Right. So we bring our capabilities in as a secure, stable platform. It's allowed them to virtualize end to end and it's just an incredible sort of landmark piece for the industry to look and say, look at the innovation that can happen. So we're really proud to be partnered with, with Rakuten. All right. Yes, and they're definitely being seen as one of the, the leading companies in terms of setting almost like a blueprint for that Absolutely. cloud native platform. But of course, they, as you mentioned, that's a greenfield operator. They kind of started from scratch, which is a great situation to be in. Most operators are the brownfield operators that have the existing networks, the existing platforms, but what you're doing is equally relevant to, to those operators as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think as we look at our portfolio, it's really about allowing customers to make a journey, right, at the rate and pace that they want with sort of that consistency and stability as they transition on that journey. Um, we build that out for everything from our Red Hat Enterprise Linux into the OpenStack and then out into the containerization world with OpenShift. So as companies are looking at, and, and we've been evolving as well, right? Our development has been evolving. We, we started with OpenStack really heavily six years ago with NFV. Yeah. And we've been learning and growing as we go. So I think everyone's on this journey. It is about helping customers and um, Telenor is one that has, you know, they have done a great job working with us as they've looked at what they want out of their transformation in NFV. They wanted to preserve their ability to choose NFV vendors. So we came in with our open stack. They then pull in from multiple vendors, NFVs. It gives them flexibility and choice. And as, as we focus on Linux, 
part of our core um, strategy is to make sure that we deliver through the open source, we deliver choice to customers, and then we deserve the, we deliver that preservation of choice, right? I call it sustainable choice going forward. Right. So that because it's open source, they can always decide what they want to do next. Um, because it's Linux, and I think this is key, right? Some folks don't realize how critical and strategic the choice of your operating system is. While we look at Linux, a customer may not know what applications they'll want to run in three years and five years. They may not know what hardware they want to run. Right, absolutely. It will run on Linux. I mean, if you just look at the capabilities of Linux, it's the number one growing operating system today, the number one choice of developers. So choosing that Linux platform as sort of that, that stable ground to build your innovation of tomorrow is absolutely critical. Okay, and do you see that? as a, like a maturity of the, the oh, NFV oh, and telco oh, virtualization oh. story. We've got to a point where the operators are, are comfortable with what the next step is. I think, um, I think quite honestly, I think innovation is happening so fast now. It's about choosing the places where you're going to um, lay down a groundwork and then you're going to be able to consume innovation going forward. Right, so for example, Telenor is a great example. They chose their platform as OpenStack with Red Hat, but they've preserved their flexibility for NFV deployments on top. And I right. think, I think, allowing customers to pick and choose where they want to choose, where they want to deliver a stability and platform, and then where they want to preserve their choice going forward. It could be multiple public clouds. It could be multiple NFV vendors. It could be multiple things. But our goal is to make sure that they can consume their Red Hat Enterprise Linux any way they want, wherever they want. Okay, excellent. So what, what comes next for, for Red Hat and, and its role in the, the telecom industry? What will the rest of 2019 bring? And what, what are the next stages you're seeing in this sector? I think one of the key things moving forward is, certainly I'd say it, it revolves around three things. Containerization for sure. And I think as we look at what customers take into the containerization world, the beauty of containers is that it allows easy deployment of applications and clearly microservices and all of that. I think what is really important to understand though is from a Linux perspective, it's actually much more complicated to deploy Linux in a containerization environment than it is in a hypervisor environment. Okay. Right? Because your container contains Linux code, your kernel certainly exists, and your Kubernetes is heavily touching your kernel. So as we look at what we deliver in the containerization world, really what the skill that you want in a partner to help you take the journey into containerization is someone who really understands Linux because security fixes and um, security vulnerabilities will attack not only the user space in the container but the kernel underneath right. and making sure that your Linux provider is, is protecting you at all three levels is really important. So our focus in containerization and really understanding the stability of your Linux that is core for us as customers move into containerization. Okay. I think AI is another one, right? We're seeing AI pop up in, in real use cases, which is, right. is fantastic. So as we look at, from Red Hat Enterprise Linux perspective, that ecosystem that we deliver, working with partners like NVIDIA, making sure that we are up to date on virtualized GPU capabilities from NVIDIA. We build that into the kernel through our deep partnerships with folks like NVIDIA, and that then translates in. So I think AI has huge potential in, next, in the next era. The other is automation, right? As the world gets more complicated, management and automation is critical. Absolutely. So we've been partnering very closely with our Ansible folks, right, in our management BU, and even down to we released our beta for RHEL 8, for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. That went out in November. And what we have in there is things like system roles, Ansible playbooks that are embedded into the operating system. Okay. So um, as we move forward, I think automation plays a key role. And as you look at our portfolio, as the Red Hat portfolio as a company, um, clearly I'm focused on Red Hat Enterprise Linux as an operating system. There's huge innovation that we, we do there. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 will, will show that we are taking that operating system and really I call it taking one step out into the various spaces of the rest of the portfolio. So we've added in tools and capabilities like Build a Podman Scopio, which allows within the operating system to build containers. Right? Right. Clearly not the orchestration level, 
that would be an open shift, but it allows you to take the first step. Similar with things like Ansible playbooks around system roles, pulls that in for consistency and easy upgrade. We have security roles, right, using Ansible playbooks. So we've partnered with the rest of the portfolio to kind of bring that operating system to really make it innovative. And now as you know, Red Hat moves to work with customers like Rasputin, like Telenor, and helping them move forward, it's about bringing the whole portfolio together. Choice of platform underneath, however you want to consume Linux, right, be it OpenStack or containerized. And then really adding in things like automation and bringing in that AI ecosystem. Right. So touching on all the, the yeah. key points of, of learning and development for, for the global telecom, and there, there isn't an operator that isn't looking at all of those yeah. things. So I'm sure you're going to have very many discussions here at the show yeah. and in the coming year. Stephanie, pleasure to meet you. Thanks nice to much. meet you as well. Thanks for having Thank us. You.